this Lexus LX in Nori Green, and that's a cool sunrise over top of the monument there, Scottsdale National Monument. So hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. Let's talk about this Lexus LX 600. And I'm gonna ask you a question about the rear because it's the most interesting part of this vehicle. But let's go ahead and talk about this, the rear seating that is. So we have the spindle grill on the front, the redesigned 23, everything carried over to 24, the lighting signature there. So Nori Green here, we have, you can kind of see it here better, not with the, uh, yeah, the obvious marks with the overnight cold temperatures of the frost. So go around the back, that's the Lexus there. The one exhaust pipe, okay. And then we come over here and we'll do this seating first. So this is the big deal. I'll go over the front in a little bit, but this is, this is really where it's at. So this is the interior of the Lexus LX. We have the styling here and we have the seating here and we have a guy turning around right over there. Don't know what's going on. <laughs> I have uh, uh, the, yeah, there he goes. All right, bye guy. Um, but I'll hop in. And so we have the screen there. And so this is, I mean, this is, Kind of some of the awkward stuff that's like row. The running boards don't stick out very far. And so you're kind of doing this game. I'm done a little week with my feet and I don't. One of the things that I'm not so sure about. Okay, so I'm gonna close the door. Okay, we have, oh, I should point this out in the sun though. Really nice styling here. Nice styling here with over top of the speaker. It's like you could just do a mesh cover and whatever, but this is nice. And then we have, I can cover up that sun. And then we have some nice amber styling here. And we'll come over here. And this is your controls. Wireless charger there. I have this opens back here for some headphones back there. Um, I do have some storage back there. That actually does fit a couple sets of golf clubs. Uh, pretty good amount of storage. Then I have, I believe that opens there. Open. <laughs> okay, not so easy to open, I guess. But, oh. It's there. That's one of the things. It's like hard to see everything because you have this screen, this stuff here. So, I mean, I like all the amenities, but I don't know. You're going to have to fuss around getting your hands around with that. So, if we talk about the seat here, and we decide we want, we have memory, and we decide to do the, the lay down seat like this. So, this kicks up. I'm sliding backwards. It's moving forward. And then it should pop up here a little bit from the footrest. That should pop down. And pop down. Okay. <laughs> I thought it popped down. I guess not. Um, let me see if there's a button for that. There's obviously a button for all sorts of stuff. But I had it pop down earlier. That's frustrating. Um, that's what happens when you put filming on camera. Okay, got it now. Sorry about that. But this goes down. That goes back up. Then you have to go to the pasture side. They're going to move this back independently. So that's how it comes back. Okay. So, and it actually it should come back even further. So this, that's the position in front of me about like this. And then I got to go back because it dropped the headrest. Good night. Okay. So I'm not going to mess with that. But so back here, I mean, that's what I'm saying is I'm not sure about leg room back here. I'm five foot seven. I don't have a lot of room. I don't have a lot of headroom either. And I just wonder if this vehicle shouldn't be just a few inches longer, which I know sounds strange, but I just don't know about, you know, if taller guys, bigger guys, that kind of stuff, whether they're fitting back in here that easily. And then this screen, this stuff through here, your own separate climate, you have your own separate relaxation. You can do full body massage and you have the settings for screen off brightness, screen change, that kind of stuff. So that's what's going on back here. Full AC as well. So that's kind of interesting that this is all controlled by this, but even with that seat all the way forward and relaxing up, I didn't feel very comfortable. And I don't know that people can really get to all this stuff back here too. Like when you're fully relaxed, you can't in the relaxing mode, lay down mode, you can't reach this stuff. I can't. I mean, I don't know if you guys have thought about this or been in one or seen one. I mean, it looks good. I mean, this is Piano black looks very luxury. Um, it's always going to look a little dirty. You have to make to maintain this, which you probably, if you're buying this, you have a driver anyway, so you can take care of it that way. But it just struck me as odd that, that the leg room back here is not that great. And that's just it's strange. But so this is your, I should do it right here. This is your uh, interior of without me in the passenger in the driver's seat. And we'll get up there and talk more about this in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll hop around. Okay. 
We have these 22 inch tires here too. Really a nice look to these. I really like these tire, wheels and tire combos. Uh, we have seat controls, window controls, mirror controls, okay? We have some camera views, trip odometer, brightness. I have, seat can do quite a bit of thing. These seats are really comfortable too. Really comfortable seats. And really a lot of traffic all of a sudden. Yeah, I have to figure out how to get the back. <laughs> Whoops. A uh, little storage tray here. This is actually a cool box in here, this setup. You turn it on, it keeps your drinks cool. Or in my case, my coffee doesn't want to go in there. It's warm, warm coffee. We have the parking brake, auto hold, which actually works out pretty good for uh, stop and go traffic. We have center locking differential, traction control on or off, and some modes for raising and lowering the vehicle for entry and exit. It's got the adaptive air suspension all the way around it. We have um, the controls for the heated seats, heated steering wheel, and then this is your multi-train select dental assist control. This thing is really still very capable, even though it's more a luxury looking vehicle. Um, we have different controls for different drive modes, different settings, I can change different colors. And yeah, and then this screen up here is your radio screen, which I just, it still doesn't, there's no home button, which I still want a home button. Um, I've start, stop, and then I have a little, uh, as far as a little small button or knob here for the radio for the volume. It's kind of an interesting place for that, but uh, let's go ahead and go for a drive and we'll talk more about this. And we'll talk about how this opens up both ways, by the way, if you ever saw that. Boom, it's kind of a nice idea. And this is, again, really high quality stitching. Okay, I'm not sure why I didn't do this in the video, but I didn't go over the sticker price. Didn't go over the sticker. What's here on the vehicle? What is the price point? Let's go ahead and go over this. I'll zoom in here in a minute, and we can see it's the Nori Green Pearl. It's 20, 2023 model year, Lexus LX 600 Ultra Lux. And we have the 3.4 liter twin turbo V6, 49 horsepower, 10 speed automatic transmission, the full time, full drive, the adaptive variable suspension, the tow hitch, 8,000 pound towing capacity. Those 22 inch rear alloy wheels and the triple beam LED headlights. We'll kind of scroll to the right here and look at the options. The total vehicle price is 129,405. Just a couple options there for our total price of 131,685 with dealer processing and handling fee. That's a bit to, to bite off there. And then we'll look over here to the left hand side. We'll see the fuel economy is going to be 19 combined, 17 city, and 22 highway for this vehicle if you drive it the way you should drive it and not stomping the gas the whole time. Okay, let's go ahead and go for a drive here and get on the road with this Lexus LX600. And uh, I've been pleasantly surprised with it. I'm just gonna say it like this. I have driven the prior generation LX, I've driven the prior generation Land Cruiser, the big bulky vehicles. And I feel like this one handles a little bit better doesn't have as much body roll as those other ones do. You still get it, it's still a big vehicle. You're still gonna feel like you're moving a little bit. But I am really impressed with how comfortable this is. The seat's really comfortable. Uh, these, these shocks and suspension all the way around really do a comfortable ride. Even the big tires, it's pretty comfortable inside the cabin. Uh, this 3.4 liter is the same kind of setup as in the Tundra engine, uh, if you know about the full-size trucks. And I feel like it's got plenty of horsepower and torque. In this case, we're using premium fuel to get more performance out of this engine, plus a little bit difference in tuning. But that with a 10-speed transmission, I never felt like I was hunting for gears. I never felt like I was needing more power. Um, and as opposed to the 5.7 liter V8, the prior generation's engine, I feel like this is quicker too. And it's because of those turbos. And you do feel it even in a vehicle of this size and this curb weight. I'm sure this thing is pretty heavy. It's a big luxury SUV. I just do find it interesting. There's not really a big panoramic sunroof. There's not really any sort of interesting night glass stuff like the Venza's got. The Toyota Venza's got this starlight kind of stuff in the, on the, that. I'm surprised it's not better lighting. There's usually some unique lighting around, LED lights, that kind of stuff. And I'm surprised about the rear leg room back there. And it just feels like it could be a couple inches bigger. I'm not sure if that's just customer demand in that they want to be able to park this in the big city, fitting in parking garages, and also fitting in like your home garage. They don't make it look just a just a hair longer. Um, it seems to me like the Escalade or the Tahoe, I guess it's more like Yukon in this case, Denali, have a little more rear legroom. And I'd be kind of, if I was a taller guy, I know I'd be shopping that a little bit um, closer to make sure I fit in the rear seats because 
you know, this kind of vehicle, you can drive here in front, and, but I really would prefer to sit back there. <laughs> I think it's kind of cool. I, I I'll be curious to know if you guys think it's safe to sit back there with that seat in the relaxed relax position. That's a, interesting. I've had uh, different vehicles that do that, a couple, couple of BMWs, and my son has ridden back there, and he's even said, yeah, it's fine for a while, but it's a little unnerving. Kind of get used to it. Hmm. Those are kind of my thoughts on this 2024 Lexus LX 600. Be curious for your thoughts on down below, as I know you will. I always like to read those. Make sure you get the videos over here, too, if I can get the sun glare off of this camera. I'll turn in the sun here in a second. Let me do this. Turn. Okay, I'll put the sun in my face, and you can still see. Um, check out other videos over here. Website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you. Even on the railroad tracks, it's fine. Down the road.